Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's second video doing the ECMWF 30 day slash 6 weeks again for UK and for the rest of Europe as well, uh, by the way, for today's, uh, for today's second video. So, as always, on Tuesday, we've got your extended European outlook. I should get on with that for you in a moment. Just say at first video today for 6 p.m. upload. And we've got 10 to 14 day of all of rate weeks coming up for later on this afternoon. Please like, share, subscribe on video. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Thank you to ECMWF.int for supplying the charts as well. And uh, I think we'll crack on. So we're going to begin with the week one mean cell pressure anomaly, which will take us from the 29th of August to 5th of September, this week, basically. And uh, we find that we've got high pressure dominating over Scandinavia and stretching out towards Iceland and Greenland as well. At the same time, there's an area of low pressure to the south of that, uh, running in from the Atlantic into western parts of Europe. And then, and then this ridge extends into the eastern part of uh, Europe as well. Uh, the 500 millibar high tide from the Arctic and North Pole view down looks like that. So this is the uh, North Pole just here. We've got a wider Arctic circle around there. Uh, and then the mid latitudes, of course, are through them. So uh, we've got above average heights, high pressure through the North Atlantic, extending up towards Greenland and then over to Scandinavia. There's a trough of below average heights in the far north and northeast of Europe and also below average heights to the south southwest of the uh, UK and Ireland, running towards France, Spain, Portugal. And we've got a ridge here across southern and uh, also some eastern, southeastern parts of Europe. So it's a rather complicated path. But the upshot is we're probably bringing cool air into the north and bringing more unsettled weather into the west and the southwest of Europe. Temperature normally looks like that, so it's below average in the far north, east, and northeast of Europe, where we've got these blue colours here from Scandinavia over the Baltic Sea in towards the Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania. We're going southwards in towards Poland, northern parts of Ukraine as well. Meanwhile, out west it remains warmer than average, it has been for so many weeks now. Uh, so we've got Ireland, UK, France, low countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, which is Germany, looking warmer than average. Eastern parts of Spain, warmer than average, although Western Spain and Portugal are actually looking a little bit cooler than average through there. And then down into the Mediterranean, most of the Mediterranean is actually actually looking warm. So uh, we've got warmer than average temperatures from eastern Spain to Italy. Um, a little bit co close to average here, normal around Balkans, gets warmer again over towards Black Sea, and then down in towards the eastern part of the Med, generally quite a warm scene through many of those Greek islands this week. Precipitation-wise, it looks like that. So, uh, northern Europe is actually quite dry, but just Scandinavia looking uh, dry. We've also got Poland, Baltic Sea states looking rather dry, though, in the Baltic Sea itself, which is a little bit wetter average. Um, out west, so it, it, it is wetter, so becoming more unsettled with the UK. Wetter average for Ireland, many parts of France looking wetter than average uh, as well. It means wetter conditions extend down into towards uh, parts of Italy as well, also possibly affecting Corsica and Sardinia. Uh, we'll be on the dry side, both of Spain and Portugal, both northern parts of Spain are wetter around the Bay of Biscay. Uh, and then uh, we go over to the eastern side of Europe, so from the Balkans, Black Sea, looks rather wet through there. And south was to Greece, actually, a little bit wetter than normal there. Perhaps some heavy thunderstorms kicking off this week. Week two will be the 5th to the 12th of September. How's this one looking? Rather more unsettled. High pressure is going towards Iceland and Greenland. Low pressure coming in off the Atlantic into many western parts of Europe. So that certainly looks like quite a significant change, doesn't it? Quite unsettled. High pressure is away to the southwest, reaching in towards uh, parts of Portugal and southern Spain. But some of this low pressure looks like it's extending into the central bowl of the Med. Uh, as well, really. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that quite unsettled this uh, this week. And again, did I say week? It's going to be the 5th, 12th of September. I think I did. Uh, so, again, we find we've got below average heights here covering much of western and also northern, northeastern Europe. Above average heights blocking around Greenland and Iceland. And then high pressure is being squeezed in towards the south and the southeast of uh, Europe. So the jet stream, uh, we'll be doing something a little bit like that. 
um, which means that for Northern West Europe, we're actually on the cooler side of the jet. Southern, East and South East Europe on the hotter side of the jet. The uh, temperature anomaly looks like that. So it's getting hotter for the Southern and Eastern parts of Europe, anywhere from like Eastern Spain, right way through the Med, in towards Greece and Turkey, those and the Black Sea, those um, temperature anomalies are going significantly hotter than normal. Uh, this week, three to six degrees above average. It remains cool in the north and northeast Europe and Scandinavia around those Baltic Sea states once again into the northwest of Russia, below average temperatures through there. Still a little bit above average through parts of northwestern Europe, so Ireland, UK, you know, we're still just about on the warm and average side as we are through the low countries into Germany. I think the hottest air is being squeezed further and further south, and we've got like France, Spain, Portugal. Uh, most of Spain, anyway, starting to look uh, a little bit on the cooler than average size. So I think there's a general cool down going on across northern and west Europe, and the hottest air is being squeezed, you know, further east and southeast, was into this eastern, southeastern part of Europe. And then, precipitation wise, week two, we look uh, like this. So, much of southern Europe is drier than normal, very dry through most of the Med. Again, from Spain all the way over to Greece and Turkey, we have drier than average precipitation anomalies. Also quite dry up over Scandinavia as well, and around Iceland and Greenland. That's where we've got the blocking area of high pressure, of course. And then we have this wetter than average wave, right way from Ireland, France, and uh, northern Spain, all the way over towards the far east side of Europe. So clearly, this is where the jet stream and the areas of low pressure are uh, pushing through where we've got this wet weather. And that does include France, it does include the UK, it does include the low countries, Germany, Denmark, you know, where it's been so very dry through this uh, through this summer. Um, some very much needed and useful rain being predicted there by the ECM at WF at 74 week two. Week three will be the 12th to the 19th of September. Rather strange anomaly, just a large area of lower pressure Covering most parts of Europe, actually. Let's see if we can shed more light with the 500 millibar height anomaly. It looks very unsettled again, this. Uh, this again, 12th, 19th September, mid part of the month. Looks very unsettled. Below average heights covering most of Europe now. So an increasingly unsettled trend through this uh, September and is in combination with a blocking area of high pressure around Greenland and Iceland as well. The uh, temperature anomaly. Looks like that. Cooling down, isn't it? Definitely cooling down. So even in southern parts of Europe, the uh, temperature not only is not as hot for the man in week three as it is in week two. Nevertheless, it is still above average for the air. That's largely down, I would have thought, to the very warm sea surface temperature noise that we have in the Mediterranean uh, this year. Um, also around the UK and Ireland, again, we see that, uh, yeah, you know, the, the sea temperatures are having an effect where, where both sea surface temperatures are warmer than average, but so is the temperature. But actually, for, for like England, UK and Ireland, there's no signal. And uh, much of Northern Europe looks quite cool, really. So many parts of Scandinavia, Northeastern Europe, down in towards Poland, um, a little bit below average through there. And like even to the west and southwest, like France, Spain, Portugal, no better than no signal, possibly hints of being a little bit on the cool side. So when we get to this middle part of September, it might actually be quite widely cooler than average, really, across many parts of uh, Europe. And precipitation wise, it still looks quite wet in many northern parts of Europe, so again from like the UK, France, Ireland, in the west over towards uh, the, the west, western side of Russia, in the east, and all points in between, uh, largely uh, above average, average shoot above average rainfall being indicated. Uh, drier for northern parts of Scandinavia, again that's where I have a broken air of high pressure around Iceland too, and then southern Europe probably ends up being a little bit on the drier side, especially through Spain and Portugal, maybe parts of uh, Italy and towards Greece as well. It's a weakening signal, as it always is, the further out you go. Week 4 will be the 19th to 22nd of September. Uh, now, is the low pressure need to lift out further north? It possibly is. So, low pressure still across northern parts of Europe, where we've got this white area, maybe we might be starting to generate a bit of high pressure. Um, possibly we are. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar. Height anomaly. That's how it looks. So, uh, again, we've got the low pressure across the far north of uh, Europe, uh, so from Greenland, Scandinavia. We're losing the blocking, so the jet streams like returning northwards with the areas of low pressure and possibly some higher pressure 
beginning to start building to the south and southwest. That might be hinting at a little bit of a change, some higher pressure for Western Europe anyway, in, uh, in the second half of September. Temperature lines look like they're warming up a little bit through Western parts of Europe as well. It's a weakening signal, but it does look as though much of Western Europe might be getting a little bit warmer uh, there. So it's quite warm over there in this eastern side of Europe too, and through much of the Mediterranean, perhaps rather on the cooler side in that northern and northeast part. Again, it is a weakening signal the further out you go. And then the precipitation anomaly. So becoming or staying dry of an average in the southern and southwestern part of Europe. A little bit on the wetter side across northern and western and also some eastern parts of Europe possibly. Right, so that's your 30 day forecast. So let's just extend out for weeks 5 and 6. Uh, well, I'm here because why not? So week 5 would be the 26th for September 3rd of October. Um, not much to go on there with the mean cell pressure on. It's putting two question marks, shall we? Have a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly. Um, I think, I think this hint in like second half of September, we'll see low pressure becoming more centred around Greenland again. And high pressure possibly beginning to build across western and southwest parts of Europe. That's why I think it's indicated rejection going back north. So overall, this is a, I think this is a hinting at a warmer and drier uh, sort of late September period compared to earlier in the month, particularly for western parts of Europe where they have been above average temperatures. Eastern, northeast Europe could still be a little bit on the cool side with this pattern. And um, precipitation probably is very, very weak still, but probably going drier, if anything, for western parts uh, of Europe, I would have thought. And then week six is going to be the 3rd to the 10th of October. Looks like that. Again, very, very weak signals. High pressure is kind of around the Azores, low pressures around Greenland. So it might just be indicating like a bit of a westerly type flow, but such a weak signal, you can't really draw any conclusions there, I don't think. The um, the uh, 500 millibar height anomaly, again, sort of indicating high pressure, somewhere close to the Azores, low pressure around Iceland and Greenland. That's certainly going to try and bring in a westerly flow from off the Atlantic Ocean, but how unsettled that will be, of course, it's a very long way out. The temperature anomaly just seems to be ever slightly above average in Western Europe, which is Southern Europe, looks quite warm, though. And the precipitation anomaly, lastly, Possibly hints of being a bit on the wet side through uh, parts of Western Europe, Ireland, UK, France in particular, uh, looking a little bit wetter uh, through there. So possibly by turning into October, going to an Atlantic-driven, westerly-type pattern. Maybe, but it is a very weak signal, so um, we will not know until much closer to the time frame. Okay then, so we're done with this week's uh, EC uh, Excel. I hope you have found it interesting and informative. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Thank you so, so much, everybody. that. We're going to be doing it all over again next Tuesday. Uh, remember, just a snapshot of what money shows. So any forecast beyond five, seven days comes with health warnings attached. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll do it all over again next Tuesday. And we, we'll have a look at this more with a UK and Ireland focus. Uh, on Saturday morning, actually, and we have a little bit of a laugh uh, with that one. We're going to be back later on with your 10 to 14 day, which will include all of the rate features, so come back for that one uh, later on this afternoon. But for this uh, 30 day, exciting outlook for, for Europe, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.